way. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in. Tune in, tune in. New York Times said, she said, I wanted to humanize them and show that their lives are valid, yeah. But I don't paint us in a perfect light at all. Why? My hope is that I can show us in the artist's way. Lena. That's your intro. Yo, was good. That's amazing. <laughs> Can I have that every day? <laughs> every day. I'll every send day. You. <laughs> Could I wake up? Please. I'll, I'll send it to you. Man, I miss you. I try to Hello. send you an email every month, like just one. I'd be like, yo, check this artist out. Listen to this music. <laughs> I always hit you right back. I'm always like, what up? I know. Creative, creative. Well, first of all, um, when I was asked to do this, I was inspired by a show in London called Jules Holland. Hmm. And in the show, it was like a music show where he basically discovered talent around the world. Wow. And what's dope about the talent, it's like really undiscovered and untapped. So I was inspired by that and wanted to do a show because I feel like history has to paint a certain picture and the literature has to write a certain way. And so you are one of those, to me, you know, as someone who, you know, believe in sacrificing my entire existence for my country. Right. When I, when I watch you, um, I'm amazed. I'm amazed by a few things. I'm amazed by the fact of the struggle of the strength. Mm -hmm. um, and when I saw you and I had a brief conversation mm -hmm. and you saw the respect I have for you looking into your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, I could see like you're one of them. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And when I say one of them, like, you know, when we see Nina Simone, it's wow. one of them. Wow, um, wow, wow. Right, the idea of how do we trick the devil, right? Mm -hmm. How do we trick the devil and we convince the people to go in our direction, right? Mm -hmm. And lead them there. So the way that we do that is through art, right? Mm -hmm. And so you paint these messages and we decode them. It's so important for you to know that. And we so appreciate you. So I wanted to start off by saying that. And when people be, when people like, we was just talking off camera, I mean, we'll definitely get into it mm -hmm. with Whitney, but when people be like, yo, why Clef? What's the best, what's the most interesting part about your life thus far? Mm. And I said, well, you know, probably my first 12 years. Because I said, you see, the first 12 years, it's gonna take me to a space and start to define what it's gonna be. So I'd like to, to, for you to take take me there. Like, what was the first, like, what's the beginning vibes, you know? Um, well, everything really starts, for me, with Chicago. You know, and I think that's, for you, you know your country. You know yeah. from whence you, where you, where you came. I don't know yet. I'm still doing the, the DNA thing. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> but for me, my country is Chicago. There's a reason why I think black people hug our blocks and why we rep our, our cities. Because we don't, a lot of us don't know how we got there. And so I'm very tapped into and very respectful of the ancestors because I know mm -hmm. that they, their strength, their sacrifice is why we get to exist. So for me, that really is where everything begins. Chicago is like my country. And it, it has such it has so much to do with who I am, how I walk through the world, how I see things. And, and then the, the other part of the beginning is my womanness, my blackness, my queerness. All those things are things that I, was, was hyper aware of even as a young person. And I knew that I gravitated toward television. I knew I gravitated toward film. And I knew I liked to read a lot. I liked to read and I liked to write. And so 
I leaned into those things. I leaned into those, those, those gifts. And, and so that was really the beginning for me as a young person realizing, oh, this is what my purpose is. This is what my calling is. And then when I got to Los Angeles, the beginning, I call it, it's so funny, people always talk about, talk to us about the struggle, but I think of it more of a journey. Like where I am now is such a small part of my journey, even though someone could say, well, you've used a lot of this time pretty wisely. Like I've, I've sold some shows, I've made a movie, I've, I've been in a movie, I've been in a Spielberg movie, I've won an Emmy, I've been on the cover of Vanity Fair. And I think people can look at those things and say, oh, okay, we can pinpoint certain things in your journey that we can look to and see success. But to me, the success is in, is really in the dark moments, as you know. It's in those moments mm -hmm. before people are paying attention. It's in those moments before people respect me. It's my beginning is being dismissed, is being ignored, is not being listened to. Because in those moments, I'm forced to really figure out who I am. You know, uh, like I wrote Queen and Slim while feeling powerless on the shy. Uh, and being in a Spielberg movie gave me this sort of gold ticket in Hollywood, <laughs> or, or then winning an mm -hmm. Emmy gave me another one. And so that's really what the beginning has always been for me, is a journey to better understand who I am as a person, as an artist, as an activist. And I still feel like I'm only at the beginning, even though that may seem odd because of where I am in my career, but mm -hmm. I really haven't even scratched the surface yet, in my opinion. Facts, like we would say as a rapper, facts. Facts. Yo, facts. you know what? So it's deep. I, I remember high school for me, mm -hmm. early days. I have this song where I say, like, you know, it's funny we ain't even make the yearbook pick, right? Mm. So so my, my high school, I just remember, I, I was like considered like this weird rapper. I'm sure. I'm sure you must have I, been an interesting character at high school. <laughs> right. I, I, I show up with a trench coat and I got my hat, you know, my derby hat. You know, my boys got their bubble goose on, scullied up. They're like, oh yo, Clef, God. man, what's this fit? I said, you know, I'm listening to this dude called Boy George. They're like, what? Wow. I'm like, dog, check this song out. And I play them, do you really want to hurt me? They're like, yo, this song is dope, bro, but do he dress like that? I say, yeah, I'm going to be going to London one day. They looked at me like, this nigga crazy. Wow. Right? And it's so crazy, right? So high school, I would time travel all the time, right? And watching you as a creative, um, what was your, like, did you time travel in high school? Did you go, what was your high school days like? Yeah, I wasn't as eccentric, I think, as you, but, uh -huh. but I was very much a tomboy. I was very much myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always joke around and say, how do people not know I was, I was, I was a lesbian? I'm walking around looking like Debrat. Oh. Because like, that mm -hmm. was the, the thing, you know, at that time. Yeah. But also, it was also cool for a, a music, whether it be like TLC, Escape, Debrat, like a lot yeah. of women, wore men's clothing and it was just wasn't yeah. a big deal and so i felt very comfortable in that way a lot of like i remember wearing like the the the, the baggy fubu stuff and and yeah, being yeah. very you know with the swag and, and whatnot and so there was always that people kind of like oh here come lena the tomboy but i was always very much a jokester for sure always telling stories and always making people laugh so there was that but i definitely dreamed a lot I dreamed a ton yeah. and I would put the headphones on and just go somewhere else. And also, here's a crazy thing now, think about high school. Yeah. I remember the night Holly Berry and Denzel won the Oscars for Best Lead Actor and Actress in a Motion Picture. It was very moving for me. It was very emotional for me as a young person, obviously being obsessed with like film and TV. And so I, the next day I had to go to school and I wrote on a t-shirt uh, Holly Berry and Denzel made history last night. And I wore that mm -hmm. to, I wore it to school the next day. Wow. So That's and, amazing. It, and I think I was lucky. I think, you know, I don't know if... Maybe kids probably were like, this girl is, like, so obsessed with this stuff. But and uh -huh. now I'm, like, friendly with Holly Berry. You know, we, we go back and forth. We yeah. tell we produce something together. And so I really do believe it's so cliche. But yeah. what you speak about, you bring about. 
And I think what happens is I try to tell people to be careful of the narrative you give yourself. Mm -hmm. Because some people say, you know, like when people meet, I'm sure you get this too, when people meet me like, hi, you know, hi Lena, so good to meet you. And I say, well, what's your name? What do you do? And they'll mm -hmm. say, oh, I'm nobody. Or, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not, mm -hmm. it, I, it doesn't matter. And I say, well, no, what is your name? Exactly. You are someone. Just because you don't live your life in front of people doesn't make your life any less valid than mine. And yes. so I think to me, I'm very aware of people's narratives. You know, they're, like, there are yeah. people you meet in life who are always waiting for the shoe to drop. Well, guess what? The shoe's gonna yeah. drop. You meet people in life right. who are always like, I'm an aspiring musician. I'm trying to be an actor. Well, then you're yeah. always gonna be aspiring. You're always gonna be trying to be. That's right. At some point, you gotta step in it and you gotta do it. Like, like a, a friend of mine, we just made her film the 40-year-old version, spelled V-E-R-S-I-O-N. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's all it's shot in black and white, Harlem, like crazy. Like, first, yeah. she's in her 40s, first-time filmmaker. We, I helped pay for the movie, helped produce it, went to Sundance. She became the second black woman ever win Best Director at Sundance, her and Ava. Wow. All the time. So I felt very proud to have been a part of making that Amazing. movie when no one else would, which is like classic. Yeah. And what I had to say to her is, because her whole, obviously, she's in her 40s, this is her first, you know, this is her mm -hmm. film debut. She directed it, she starred in it, she wrote it. It. And um, her name is Rada Blank. She's amazing. She's also an MC. Um, she goes by Rada Miss Prime. And so, oh yeah, you know I'm gonna get into that right after on. this interview. Dude, you, you got to. She's amazing. You know that. She's brilliant. And so um, she she had to change her narrative. She went from always trying to get her movie made to she's now a filmmaker, and now she's an award-winning filmmaker. And and I can see the shift and growth in her where it's like, oh, okay, well now I have to turn a page because now this is the path I'm on. And I think to me, that's my mission is not only changing the narrative about black people, but also being honest about our narrative too. Uh, but I hope that I can convince people to change the narrative in their own lives. Wow, well, amazing, man. Um, so my stomach was dying. I was with my daughter, she's 15, with my wife. I think it was called Black as Fuck. Yeah. Yes. So you, you it, I don't, how do y'all do this? Like, it's so amazing, because I know y'all wanted to die laughing. Of course. Um, which, <laughs> it was, yo, y'all really went in. And I'm speaking mm -hmm. to someone, so my theater background, when I was 16 years old, I was in a play called Club 12. It was a Shakespearean story of the Malvolio, the Club 12, Malvolio, Sebastian, Olivia. Mm -hmm. It was actually a hip hop play. Wow. And I had wrote all the music for the play. I think wow. Quincy Jones came to say when I was 17. What? Um, so wow. this is what's crazy when I see you, if I look at you a certain way. Okay, I was in the play, MC Light was in the play. Darren, who became a big super choreographer on, he was in the play. Lauren Hill was in the play. Lisa Carson was in the play. Oh, it was like what? this amazing thing that we did. And everybody um, from the play just came out to be like these um, amazing superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. And then now you're going to choose the path, right? Because even though, you know, we act in trying to off-Broadway thing, but we're singers, we're musicians. And some of us land on the acting side. Some mm -hmm. land on the director side. Right. Some land on the artist side. But at the end of the day, we all really are artists, like we're creators. Right. So when I was watching y'all on that show, <laughs> I just was like, I didn't know how how y'all didn't laugh, man. It was so incredible. I mean, and I, you were so dead ass serious. Oh yeah, I can I do that. Like, I oh can lock God. in. But like, I remember yeah. Kenya rallying the troops, you know, per se, for mm -hmm. that episode, which was not an easy task. To get yeah. all of us. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I saw it. all of y'all. I was like, yeah. And and um and I think he always, Kenya is a very sweet. He always, you know, credits yeah. me because he says you were the he said I was the first person to say yes. And I think I'm yeah. very anybody know I always joke, I'm like the flavor flavor of like, you know, writers. I'm always like, let's go, let's do it, let's let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm down. And then obviously he got Ava and he got well Packer and all kind of stuff and Issa and the whole the whole crew. And it was very powerful. I saw so many, because you know, on Instagram, people they take pictures yeah. of the TV screen and and post it. Yeah. And I saw yeah. so much, so many screen grabs of that that image of all of us on, you know, on yeah. the, the Zoom. Powerful. And, and, and yeah, and I didn't even realize, because obviously we all did those by ourselves. So yeah. it was powerful for me too when I saw the finished product and just to see how much 
how much weight we can bring and what this new class, what this generation is doing. And you're right, you know, we really are, we're someone's ancestors right now. We are the beginning for someone. And I think that's, you know, this is the, the there's a revolution every generation and this is what yeah. ours looks like. And, you know, I think it was it was funny and silly and, and I like that, that Kenya, because he talked to me about this privately. He's like, we as black artists, you know, we don't always love everything that we do. And and he's like, and we need to own that. And I think we sometimes as black as a black artist community can sometimes feel guilty about it because we don't have we're still fighting to have the, the accurate representation. Uh, in, in the music industry and in, in the film in the, in the, in the uh, TV industry, we're still fighting to to feel seen. And so I think that's why it is difficult for us to take jabs at each other um, yeah. in the press, even though every now and then sometimes you'll see some stuff go down. Like um, I remember when Tyler and Spike were not, you know, friend friendly. Yeah. But I yeah. think that but they've now since become friendly. And and I think that is what I think where we are as a community is that it's better for us to to talk to each other, to build with each other and to be honest with each other, even if it is in private sometimes. Um, but that episode is so powerful and I was really honored to be a part of it. Well, when I looked at it, I saw power, you know? I saw economic freedom. Yeah, me too. I saw, yep. yo, if, y'all, if we could translate that to the new generation, Chicago, Detroit, yep. all yep. over. So yep. I definitely commend you on that. Now, check this out. Why Clef don't do no interviews? I don't even know what that is. I feel good. I, I feel like talk. you ask really great conversations. I'm like, this is the all best I interview do, ever. I said, I said, look, all we're going to do is talk. But you're, you're very hard to surprise. So I bought a few surprises for you. Oh, right? snap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you know we talk. Like, you right. ain't even ready. But <laughs> I know you love Whitney Houston. Of like, course. I got her signature right here. I, I oh, know I know doing. how much With I know how much you love Whitney, um, and I was speaking to Clive. You know, we had great conversations about Whitney. I had a good time with Whitney, Bobby, everybody. So, like, I was really inside of that family. Mm-hmm. Like when I tell yeah. you, like, meaning in the culture with them for a very short time, and it felt like we known each other like a hundred years. Right. So now one night. I was in the studio with Whitney. So you asked me what that was like. So this is it. So um, I always like when when I when I when I speak of Whitney and I say her daughter, the reason why I say her daughter and not a name, that's how she always looked at her. My little girl, my daughter. Right? So I'm in the studio. And you can imagine, so I wrote this song, this song that goes, My love is your love and your love is my love. It will take it, right? So right. first of all, I write this song and I'm nervous. Like, Great is song. Whitney going to like this song? Is Iconic Whitney going to like this song? Right? Mm-hmm. And I, I get in the studio with her and before going in, you know, they're like, yo, man, Whitney going to be there. Bobby Brown won't be there. Right, you know, right. You know how it goes. Like, <laughs> you, and you know Clive, right? So right. you got to deliver the record, bro. Do not leave without this record. Okay. So you know, like, you know, as, as a composer, producer, you have your task. It's to take the rocket up no matter what. So you go in there and she's in there and we connect like Jersey. And I start to, she's in the booth. Every take she did, I saved, but... While she was doing that, I noticed her daughter in the back says, sing, mommy. Mm. While Whitney's in the booth, right? I don't even tell Whitney what I'm doing. I take another microphone and I said, what did you just tell your mama? And she said, sing, mommy. And I sampled it, right? And I held it on. I ain't even tell Whitney. So Whitney's killing the song. Obviously. And <laughs> while she's murdering this song, um, <laughs> so me and Bobby Brown knew this secret when we did it, you know? Right. And years later, I talked about it because me, Bobby Brown, literally was, when it comes to R&B and 
his voice and the way he portrayed it, I was amazed by that dude, you know what I'm saying? I even wanted to dance like Bobby. I had my hair at the time. And I said, Bobby, you wanna go in there and sing some backgrounds for me? Bobby goes in there, and now, so whenever anyone listens to My Love's Your Love, all right, I want y'all to pay attention. Y'all gonna hear, sing, Bobby, and then you'll know that story. And the male voices that you hear in the back is Bobby Brown. And I tucked him in the back like a Marvin Gaye record. You know how Marvin would space a lot of his vocals. Yeah. So I tucked that because I didn't really want a movie with Clive, you know what I'm saying? Like right. I just wanted, I didn't want the record to be prejudged before playing it, you get me? Mm -hmm. So um, they heard the record and the record was amazing. Few days ago, few days later, I'm on my way to Jamaica to do a big dance hall clash sound system. I'm gonna be in Jamaica, DJ Khaled's gonna be in Jamaica. This back in the days, we have a big DJ competition wow. and it's called like Sound Boy Competition. So you literally go there, you're challenging the next Sound Boys. My crew from Japan, Mighty Crown is there. So I say, how am I gonna kill these sound systems? I said, Whitney, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to do a dub plate for me. She was like, baby, what the fuck is a dub plate, right? And I said, okay. <laughs> so I said, so what it is is, you know how when people be doing drops for the DJs, uh -huh. I said, it's the same way, but versus like you just doing a drop, you're gonna talk about how great my sound system is. And if anybody comes to get us, they will not survive. And I say, in the middle of Jamaica, I am going to play this dub plate. And after I play this, nobody else will be able to play. So when I played this dub plate, we heard the sound of lightning and thunder. I'm going to play you a Whitney Houston vocal that no one can ever play but me. And I'm gonna share with you just a raw vocal of what she did for me that night. Check this out. Hey, yo, this is Whitney Houston. Yes, Massive, this is the original vocalist. I'd like to say rest in peace to Dennis Brown. Brown, 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 Brown. If tomorrow is judgment day, and I'm standing on the front line, mm, and the Lord asks me what I did with my life, I would say, why club murdered a sound boy? <laughs> If I wake up in World War III, I see destruction and poverty. And I feel like I want to go home. It's okay as long as White Clef is with me. My love is your dub and your dub is my dub. It will take an eternity to break us And the chains of our start couldn't hold us My sound is your sound Cause the refugee sound is the only sound It will take an eternity to break us And a million sound boys will die before us Behind y'all, it's alright Wow okay. You hear a little chuckle at the end Yeah so, so I know what that means to you. I just, you when I me. say you. Damn. Yeah, but I know you though. I saw you, I, I understand the art and where you come from. So she chuckles at the end. And cause she's just like, you crazy nigga. Yes. And <laughs> she, she does this and that night in Jamaica. So when you ask me, how did it feel like being in the studio with her and, and what kind of, it just felt like, I don't know what no angel really look like because they say if you get close to an angel that you get burnt to death. That's how hot they are. They always on fire. Yeah. And I think the closest person I met to an angel was the late great Whitney Houston wow. um, in every way, in every fashion. And I, I share that with you like as this brother sister vibe. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? No, I, I receive that and I appreciate you sharing that with me. That's a gift. I'll hold on to for the rest of my life. And I just appreciate you for making 
her so eternal, I think, because <clears throat> that song, in a way, was pro uh, prolific, you know? It almost, to me, I think a lot of people obviously think about I Will Always Love You. Yes. Um, but My Love Is Your Love, I think is so representative as to how she lived her life. And I mean, like literally the reason why I got on the back of one of her, her uh, albums, she signed with Love Whitney. And so in that, I lifted and got that tattooed. And it's a reminder that everything I do in this life, I should do it with love. And because I think that's how she lived. She did things with love. And also you, you know, you immortalized her daughter who, you yeah, know, bless up, you yeah. know, our, yes. they rest in power. And, yeah. you know, what other producer would hear her, her little kids say, sing mommy and go, oh, wait, I got to. That has to be a part yeah. of this, because because yeah. Bobby Christina was so much a part of who she yes. was, and then yeah, I, and I had Christina no idea was. that Bobby did background vocals on that. I definitely didn't know. Yeah, yeah, so, I know I was gonna get you. I didn't yeah. have no idea, because I, I pay attention sometimes. I'm like, mm, who that I sound know. like, and I and I just felt like, and that video was so beautiful, and mm -hmm. and um, and I also know we were talking about Robin. That Robin apparently was very <sighs> instrumental in that album, and how things yes. you know were presented and how they rolled out and i remember being very impressed by that album rollout because yeah. it could have hit cheesy it could have felt like oh this is a woman yeah. who came from the 80s who is still trying to be current but it wasn't it was so cool like having you missy i think lauren did a record um yeah, it, was it was so like just yeah. beautiful and effortless but that song to me out of all the tracks what was just so so um, she was so connected to it, and and yeah. and and hearing hearing that now that she's gone, whenever I hear that song in particular, um, it's just so beautifully done. So kudos to you for really paying attention to who she was and putting it on on, on vinyl for us to have forever. Yep, Jersey, Jersey, so. <laughs> Jersey, um, Jersey, go hard. Jersey, go hard. So, I got one more surprise for you. Okay, damn, I'm gonna top that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so, when we was talking, I looked at you and I was like, you know I could score your movies, right? I said, yo, I'm trying to be the next Jan Zimmer, Quincy Jones, this is Let's me, go. this little Haitian dude. And you like, man, we so need you, like, yo, so, when I was young, I had a gift. The gift was when I can see an image, mm -hmm. I would turn the TV silently. Hmm. We'll look at the image and then I would paint my score of the emotion that I saw. So I said, what happened if I showed you how I felt when I saw Queen and Slim? Wow. What happens if I take a scene and turn the volume down oh, and pick up my guitar <laughs> and just pick up the guitar and show you how much you are appreciated? Wow. This is me just taking one of your scenes from Queen and oh, Slim and going in. Oh, no, I'm just, here we go. Can I be your legacy? You already are. <laughs> Jeez. 
Jesus. Well, now we got to do an alternate, you know, score <laughs> thing. I got to show it to Melina. I got to send that to Melina and be like, whoa. Wow. <laughs> you know what? Actually, wow, that was beautiful. One, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing my, your gifts. My, to you, though, this is me. I can't reach over there to you, so I'm sending you the guitar vibration. You know? I feel them. And it Good. felt like, it felt like, because that's how, you know, like, movies used to feel. Like, in the 90s, you know, we watched those movies, and that's how it would sound. And I think, obviously, Melina was trying to play with something and make it feel more futuristic, so it felt more now. But I think what you did was you, because that, I grew up on the 90s, so I remember watching, you know, Boys in the Hood and Do the Right Thing and yeah. Miss Society. And that was so stunning, because I wouldn't have, have a thought to even put a guitar there, but there's something, because guitars cry. Yeah. And so, so that's this, why it yeah, feels yeah. like you're crying over the over the, the celluloid. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And and this the original score, insanely inspirational and amazing. I wouldn't be able to have done that without understanding mm. that. So that's my way Dev of Dev Hines, shout out to Dev Hines, yeah. Dev Hines, genius. So as, as I as I send you on your way until I see you again, mm -hmm. um, in the in the climate of the world that we in, and what is it? Because it, it clearly feels like the country is divided. Um, mm -hmm. And it feels like that we are in a situation of panic, but at the same time, you can feel justice and you can feel possibility for reforms mm -hmm. in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. So what what words would you like to, to, to leave us with as a young leader? That hope is a luxury. Hope is a luxury, but it's one we can't afford not to have. That's the only thing that's gonna keep us alive. Because when you think about our ancestors, which is where we began, that's all they really had was hope. And that's what we are. We are what they hoped for. We're living the lives that they couldn't. And generations after us will live lives that we could have never imagined. But we have to keep that hope alive. Because without it, we become pessimists. And we, we cannot afford that. I'm always, always going to be hopeful about this nation. Because if we can go from property to president, I think that we can go even further than that. And we haven't overcome yet. But I believe Martin Luther King Jr. when he says he, he saw the promised land. He saw it. And we aren't there yet. But I think if we continue to look at each other and see ourselves, we can get there a little bit faster. I so, so appreciate you. I love you. Sending I love you a you. virtual kiss. I love you, I really. See you. And, um, and I really thank you. And thank you for inspiring us. And I will see you soon. I can't wait to see you, man. And I can't wait to work love with you. Love you, mother. I love you. Thank you. Already you already know. Thank you for love this. Love you so much. Love Thank you, you my love.